Wow, that's a really warm welcome. I'm really impressed. Now I feel great. So uh, thank you so much for the great introduction. I'm really excited to be here. Hopefully I won't be awful and very boring since I'm the only thing between us and hopefully some whiskey and dessert. So I'll try my best. Basically, I'm here to talk about from shoes to bits. You probably wonder what that means. So my background is from Nike. I don't know too much about Telco. I've been with Telenor for two years. So most of this room, I would assume, has way more uh, experience in Telco. So I think I can learn a lot from you guys. So hopefully during this keynote, I will learn something. And I've been always working in digital and digital transformation. So hopefully I have something uh, OK to say. Uh, but to introduce me, I was wondering, I looked through and I was uh, asking some friends if they could introduce me. So I, maybe some of you have seen uh, 500 Days of Summer. It's a great movie and they actually talk about me a bit there. So I'm from Norway, I'm called Lars. So I'll just play that clip first to do a little introduction. Good luck. So me, I find out now before you show a better place and, well, she's in bed with Lars from Norway. Who's Lars from Norway? Just some guy she went to the gym with. Brad Pitt's face and Jesus' abs. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the warm introduction. Uh, couldn't say it better myself. Uh, but basically, yeah, so I'm, I'm heading digital marketing at Telenor Group. Uh, I've been doing that for a couple of years, uh, really driving digital transformation and how we can accelerate digital. My previous experience is mainly from Nike, where I worked at the European headquarter outside of Amsterdam, if any, well, some Dutch. Uh, and I'll talk a bit today about my journey from, from Nike to Telenor and what I believe we can learn from each other and how our journey has been to accelerate digital within Telenor. So that's my purpose today. Uh, just a little overview first of Telenor, if not everyone knows about Telenor. So uh, we have 178 million customers. That's probably why you said we're one of the biggest, but we're not really one of the biggest. We're 19,000 employees, and I heard from some of the room, you guys are like 200,000. I was like, man, that's really impressive. Uh, we're big in Scandinavia. We're from Norway. That's our uh, base. That's where I live at the moment. And then we're also big in Emerging Asia, uh, between Bangladesh, Myanmar, and Pakistan. And then we're big in developed Asia, in Thailand, and Myanmar. So you can kind of see here, 75 million of the customers are in Bangladesh, 43 in Pakistan. So there's a lot of people, but the ARPU is quite a bit lower than Scandinavia. So majority of income is still in, in Scandinavia. So, um, so that's a little bit about us. I'll start about Nike and kind of that's where I come from. And uh, I think it's been a quite interesting journey. So when I started, uh, it's like eight years ago, uh, digital was really nothing. So it was a little startup, no one really cared. Because when you think about Nike, what do you think? Shoes. Shoes. Yeah, we're a little bit more than that. We're a really good brand. And it's all about creating the emotional connection. And then it's the products, it's the shoes and the apparel, right? But you don't think retail, and you definitely don't think, or you didn't used to at least think digital. So we used to be really, really good at brand and, and, uh, and product, but uh, all the retail was in JD and Foot Locker, Intersport, etc. But after like one year I was there, uh, something in the, in the top manager, not me, uh, in Portland, they saw that the customer is changing especially the young people that Nike is selling to, they increasingly to digital in a place you've never seen before. And then the question is, what do we do in this? Do we want to give that personal relationship to our third-party retailers, or do we want to bring it in to, to, to ourselves? And that's when the decision was made to really go for digital and create it as a key part of the strategy to have a digital first, actually, uh, from Nike. And that was a massive change, completely uh, a lot of investment. No one really knew what it meant, but we knew we were going to leave with net digital. And digital became the oxygen of the brand team, of the product team, and of the retail. And they invested heavily into digital. Uh, it was, it's been a huge journey, and, and one of the key parts is the distribution. So how do we treat customers differently in digital? And uh, like in, in the retail world, we had the flagfish stores like Nike Town London. We had a running specialty stores. We have a sneaker boutiques. We have a training clubs. And we tried to replicate that on digital. And that was actually uh, a huge success in how we built this ecosystem of being relevant to the right customer at the right time. The mom of 40 years don't need the same experience as a sneaker head that is uh, trying to cop the latest limited edition shoe. So I was actually one of the guys who uh, launched sneakers app in Europe. So if there's any sneakers in the room, this might be a long shot. Yeah, 
Okay, awesome. Maybe you've tried sneakers. Uh, this has actually been our most successful app of all of them. We have triple digit growth uh, for uh, at least three years when I was there. And it's been now becoming the playbook of all of the digital transformations at Nike. It was really how can you create a personal relationship to your customer and it's much more than a transaction. So you need to create authentic content. You need to create amazing experiences that are above and beyond. So we used a lot of time on creating this membership strategy of how we can treat our customers much more than a transaction, but actually have a personal relationship. And uh, it's all about personalization and using the data. And I think that's why it was so exciting to come to Telenor. We actually have a subscription business and know way more about their customers. Um, and just to show, this was like a week ago, so I'll just include it, but now Nike's CEO, he, the old one, Mark Parker, has been there for 30 years, not CEO, 30 years, but they always came from design and product and marketing. Now is the first time ever they appointed the chief marketing officer, uh, John Donahoe, from eBay. So just showing how extremely they go into, when they mean digital, they really go for it and actually change the whole company. Um, so there's three key components that I'm going to talk a bit about today that is kind of similar across and, and that we learn from. It starts with distribution to talk a bit about, personalization, and then agile transformation. And I actually, I really think agile transformation is the, is the majority, is the 70%. So that's what we're going to focus most about. So distribution, driving the customer relationship. So, uh, so I mentioned when we want to create that customer relationship with our customers, and in telco is sometimes hard because we're not a high interest product. We don't have launches every Saturday that really drive people in. So our approach has been, so we have, in Asia, we have one million points of sales. It's an incredible ecosystem directly connected to a backend with these mom and pop retailers. So what we're trying to do is to build a very strong ecosystem from our own, from our own apps and from our own digital channels. But equally, we're trying to really build with our partnerships. So we know the customers mainly on Facebook, like you mentioned, uh, on Google, and we've been building really strong relationships on how can we use those channels to build our distribution. So we're one of the first telcos, I believe, to launch native Android integration in some of our key markets. We are now a carrier page with Facebook, uh, as the first market in Pakistan, we can actually, in Facebook, manage your account and manage your balance. You can upsell, and we have personalized offers on an individual level that's made in real time for every cons uh, customer. So, so really driving that at the core is one of the key, key things we believe is going to drive us forward. Personalization, so we have all this data. So we've been investing heavily. We bought a company called Tapad in New York on how we can build a marketing technology, understanding who our customer are across devices, so they have a device grab, and building a customer data platform that gathers all of our information and can be a customer-centric approach to our customers. So we don't want to look at each channel and then execute to whoever it is. We want to look across each channel, look at the customer and what needs they have, and be extremely data-driven. But the secret sauce, I believe, and I want to discuss this because I, I probably some of you guys are on the same thing. Telcos, I think agile is, is a big buzzword. I've heard a lot of companies, but this is where we really invested. So in my experience, 70% of the value we've been driving is from completely transforming organization to an agile setup and uh, looking end-to-end -end at their customer journeys. So that's what I will focus on now. So when I was hired into Telenor, I was leading digital front runner from a group perspective where we chose one business unit to invest heavily to create a digital first telco. So we, we chose Sweden, and then uh, I had to move to Sweden. So that was, uh, my family got a bit pissed, but uh, it was all right. Uh, uh, and then we moved to Sweden to really set up this digital first telco. Our ambition was to 10x digital share of sales in three years. Didn't manage that much growth, but it's been an amazing story. Um, so, it's two key components. It's agile and it's technology. But I'm going to focus now on agile. Uh, who in this room? So now the awesome part starts that you guys are going to help me. Who knows what agile is? Yeah. You accept to fail, but you, you fail fast, in fact. And you can succeed, fa succeed, succeed fast as well. It means that you have a small team at the beginning and uh, beyond the proof of concept, you, you have, in fact, the minimum viable product that you launch. And you, you start with this uh, uh, small launch, and then you'd feed, in fact, the product 
with the feedback of your clients. You're completely correct. We can switch places. Anyone else? What else do you think about Agile? So uh, fail fast, MVP, small teams. Come on. Sorry. <laughs> We're in the same car. <laughs> OK, so for me, agility is really the capability to adapt. Yeah. So you observe, you orient it, then you think, and then you act. So it's really this circle, and you rinse and repeat. So observe, think, act, and then rinse and repeat. Completely correct. So I feel like orange, you guys are on the agile path. OK, one uh, last. What, uh, anyone else who wants to have a take on what you think Agile? Yeah? OK, yeah? Uh, every, everything was said already about the Agile, so it just, uh, wanted, I just want to make a little uh, digression about the elephant. So Agile is eating elephant by the small teams of developers uh, uh, with uh, sprints of two weeks. Uh, and I, I, every two weeks, we ask an elephant how he, feel, if he, if he feels about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's incorrect. No, <laughs> it's good. It doesn't need to be developers. But yes, completely correct. So what we think about Agile when we in Telenor, so we think about Agile as a much bigger thing. And, and it's not only developers. It's not only technology. We look at it across the company. And for us, it's all about customer-centric. So we put the customer in the center of everything we do. It's about a culture. It's a mindset and set in process. So we feel a lot of resistance from organization because they think it's like a startup where everyone goes uh, in anarchy, but it's not at all. I never worked in anything as processed as an agile organization. So there's a couple of key uh, principles. Uh, most of you, sounds like you're really good at agile, so you probably know this, but I'll give you a quick recap. Starts with this awesome goal-driven cross-functional self-steering team with the end-to-end -end, uh, capabilities to execute on their mission. Prioritization and focus, you have a clear backlog with things you want to do, prioritized on the value and feasibility of each initiative. And you choose very clearly which ones you're going to do when, and then you do only a few at a time, in a two or three week sprint. You do an iterative and incremental uh, delivery. So we try to get as quickly as possible to MVP, minimal valuable product, test it with customers, see what they think. Is it actually working? Is this something we should spend time on? And then either we fail fast or we continue. Transparency, so we, we're really big fans of Scrum. So that's where you sprint two to three weeks. Uh, you meet every morning. You have a nice stand up with your team. You talk about what you did yesterday, what you're doing today, and if there's any blockers to do that. And it's really awesome for collaboration. You welcome change. So we, we really look at the quarter to quarter basin on the bigger picture on the OKRs, objectives, and key results, and where we want to go. But we continuously improve based on our feedback from the customers, from our data, and what's working and not. And then Think, build, test, tweak. And what we realize in Telenor is, when you get into this model of, you want to think very quick, but you want to do optimization over planning. So you want to do really quick to build and test and see if it actually works. And then we realized, man, we have way too many managers and planners in this company. And maybe some of you can relate. But uh, you need way more doers, because we need a hypothesis. Then we need to actually make it. And then uh, we need different capabilities. So it's quite simple. That's the six core principles that we follow, at least. But it's been very effective, actually. So if you look at the team, so here is one of our awesome squads. We follow the Spotify model with squads and tribes. This is the mobile acquisition squad in Norway called Sherpa, because they always go to the top of the mountain. They do the heavy work, and they're very humble, they think. Not really. But, uh, but they're really good. Uh, I just want to show. What's a key learning spin So I've been doing this in several countries now, and, and, and it's, it's been uh, very good. So you start with a product owner. So he's the guy who is uh, responsible for the vision, where we want to go, how we're going to get to the target. Then you have the Scrum Master that's responsible to actually deliver that. So in the sprint, when we decided, the PO and the team decides on what you want to focus on, the Scrum Master sets the team up for success. Just the collaboration, deep blocks them, and are the servant leader to actually deliver what they promised in the next two weeks. You have a data scientist to do modeling and understand the customer, media manager to execute in the channels, editor to make landing pages or content, web analyst to understand what they're doing there. And then the secret sauce on the team, we didn't start with this. And this is hard because the silos were so strong, but we wanted to have 
developers and UX people on the marketing squad. And that's actually where the real magic happens because now when you have these two guys, you can make anything from a front-end perspective. When these guys have a good idea, you can almost create anything. Maybe you won't connect to the back end, but that doesn't really matter because you want to test if you actually make money on it from the customers. If they like it, then you can do the back end afterwards. But if you're having the front end developer over here and the UX person, you can make anything. And that's really, really awesome. So it's all about the Empower team, co-located, sitting together, 100% dedicated, so they only work in this squad. And, uh, and they are no blocking and self-organizing. So basically, I was a tribe lead with many squads. Our role is a servant leader to make sure they have everything they need, set the direction. But these guys are responsible for figuring out how they're going to do it. And the cool thing then is when you have a front-end developer that's responsible for a sales target, he used to get orders, right, from all these people. It was usually bad orders, and he was really frustrated. He's this guy who has been with us here. He's, he's been there for 20 years. Um, and it was really hard, and the other uh, developers around and didn't understand, like, they knew how to code, but they didn't understand the customer. So it would lead to a lot of suboptimal products. It wasn't really great. Uh, and, you know, it's not really cool to just get orders and then deliver it. Now he's responsible for the actual results. He comes with some of the best ideas on how we're going to sell to our customers. And he's just, like, literally coding late at night, and is super stoked, and thinks this is the best thing that's in sliced cheese. So, so it's been really cool. Uh, so how it works at scale, so we have all these different uh, squads uh, with the end-to-end -end capability of whatever scope they have. Then you have the chapters with the chapter leads who is responsible for developing you in that speci speciality. For example, analytics, making sure that the analysts are awesome. And then you have the, sorry, tribe lead uh, and agile coach. So the tribe lead sets the direction and makes sure that we're working against the same goal. And then we have the Agile coach that actually ensures the collaboration across the teams. So what does this mean? So Empower, this is the developer I talked about. So this is uh, our CEO, Sigurd Brecke, at the, the Global Town Hall. But the things they do is why the Sigurd Brecke was putting it off stage. So the things that usually would take six months, they now did in three weeks. And because he's on the team, he sits next to the UX persons, so they can talk all day, and they don't have any meetings. They only work together. The efficiency has been increasing 5 to 10x. The management needs to change. And that's been the biggest realization. Many people want Agile to just be for the specialists, that they change. But this is a whole organizational change from this is the CIO and the CMO in Sweden the, that I worked really closely with. They all need to change. And, then, and now we, we usually talk about tight, loose, tight. Anyone heard about that? So tight, loose, tight is that you're, as a management, you're tight on the direction and where you want to go. That's super important. Then you lose on how you're going to get there. That's up to the teams. And then you're tight on the results and accountability. Traditionally, in Telenor, we used to be opposite. We used to be loose, tight, loose, where we're like, we didn't really know where we we're going. We were really tight on how we we're going to do it. And then we were like, not really following up. So, so this completely changes the management role. And now it's more about being a Gartner, creating the system and network of teams that are thriving and they have the budgets they need, the resources they need and they figure out how to do. We went from data curious to data driven. So we used to have this analyst team and all these people around didn't even know what data was about. They asked for some anecdotes and then the market manager would maybe go try and do some things. Now the whole team has all the data. We democratized data. We used a lot of money on creating the tools for the team. And used, uh, so the whole team now is working on A-B testing. Everything we do, we A-B test. Everything we start with is an hypothesis, and then we see if it actually works. And we have put data uh, driven into a system and a process, which really, really is awesome. And then agile approach to agile. So that's pretty obvious, but when, how often when you do organizational changes, do you do it like once, and then you wait two years, and you do another one, and then you wait two years, and you do another one? But this is all about how can we actually create an unlearning organization and frequently change it and actually adapt it to a market, to a competition, and to our own needs. I think over time, the only way we're going to have a competitive advantage is to create that fast organization. Because the market will change, the technology will change, but uh, if you have the ability to adapt, you will come over and win. So you're probably not completely convinced yet. Uh, that's fair. Um, but I have some numbers, and I know telco people, if there's one thing they love, it's KPIs. I learned that as working in group in Telenor. 
So what does this actually mean? So in um, the last three years, we've been able to have 56% uh, KGAR in Sweden, which is far outperforming the average of Telenor. And also, if you look at the Gartner just came out with a new digitization index uh, on the marketplace. And actually, we used to be a digital uh, late move advantage, is what the CMO would call it. If you look positive at it, Telenor Sweden was far behind. Last year, we were number four out of four. Now, in one year, we put five points, and our number two, only one point between behind number one which is Telia, which is by far the number one telco in Sweden. So that's, we're on the right direction. Uh, making people awesome. So telco, and in Sweden, you have a lot of awesome brands. And we need young, talented, digital people. And we were struggling like hell, because we didn't have the right employer branding. People didn't come to us. They went to Spotify, Ikea, Volvo, whatever, not Telenor. But through this change, we've been able to really change that. So 29% improvement in EMPS in one year. So people really love it. 80% rated higher and are more motivated now than before. And this is given a completely different access to talent. And now the retention has, has really increased from, from where it used to be. So, and that's also why I'm really passionate about doing this because it's a, a people-centric strategy. And, like when we did it in Norway afterwards, we had started with a pilot with 20 people, and 20 out of 20 preferred this over the old world and was fighting to, to scale it. And, and now that's happening, so that's really cool. Speed, so 5 to 10x increase in speed. It's sometimes a little bit hard to measure speed. Uh, so it depends on the area. But we go from, we used to spend two, three, four weeks to launch a campaign to three, two, three days. We, in, in DTAC in Asia, we even do two, three hours to respond to the competition. Uh, so we extremely increase speed. And I think of personalization, if you want to succeed over time, you need to create this organizational muscle to improve the speed. Because you need to test and learn. You need to fail and fail fast. And the only way we're going to win over time is to have this speed. We need to stop creating so much meetings. We used to spend almost all our time in staircoats, in product management, in meetings, and getting the resources together. Now you have a 100% dedicated team. They only need to focus on creating the products for the customer. And that's why you have this huge improvements in speed. And now we're looking to scale. So we started this incumbent in Sweden to, to really prove the strategy. It's kind of worked. So we, now we've been scaling in Scandinavia, and that's why I'm in Norway, and now actually moving to Bangkok, so my family's not so happy again in February, and now we're going to create uh, one of the first Asian fully agile companies with DTAC. And DTAC, if you know that, that's one of our biggest BUs actually with uh, 20 million customers. So, so that's going to be a real, real ride and a cultural uh, kind of challenge, but we started already the front runner and uh, they're embracing it. So it's, it's, it's really fun to see. Then I'm just going <laughs> to drop this. <laughs>